In this video, I solved Monitors 2, which is a really cool box, except Wait, there's two of them! What the f- For this machine, you need to root two different boxes in order to solve it. I really enjoyed this machine, and I think it's a great one to solve, especially if you want to practice privilege escalation. Let's jump right into it. Step 1 is running Nmap, a port scanner that tells us which services are running on the box. SC for default scripts, SV for version information, dash p dash to scan all ports, and let's send it to a file so we can look at it later. While that's running, let's take a look and see if there's a web server, and it looks like there is, and it's running Cacti version 1.2.22. Plugging that into Searchsploit, we see that there's a remote command execution, or RCE exploit, for that exact version of Cacti on the box. Seeing an RCE vulnerability this early was pretty sweet, since most RCEs lead to shell access pretty quickly. I tried using the Python script from Searchsploit, but I couldn't get that one to work correctly, and I'll explain why in a moment. Luckily, I found another script on GitHub that ended up working, and now I could execute whatever commands I wanted on the box. At first I wasn't sure if the exploit was working correctly, so in order to test it, I set up a Python web server on port 80, and I ran the curl command in the exploit to ping the web server on my machine. And it worked! I also tried using a regular bash reverse shell, but for whatever reason it just wasn't working. Maybe because it was in a Docker container, or there was some sort of configuration preventing it from working. I suspect the reason the exploit from earlier failed was because it was also using that same standard bash reverse shell as a payload. For now though, I was just going to try to enumerate the machine a little bit more, and see if I could find an easier way of getting a shell. To enumerate the box, I used the dollar sign parentheses syntax in bash, so that I could run other commands and send the output of that directly to my web server so I could read it. From here, I was able to execute the pwd command to see that we were in var www html, and the ls command to get a list of the files in there, which were mostly just a bunch of PHP files. Seeing this, I thought I might be able to upload and access my own PHP file, which could potentially get me a shell that way instead of using bash. So I configured the pentestmonkey php reverse shell with my IP address and port 4444, uploaded that to the machine, visited it in the browser, and it actually gave me a shell. But let's go back a little bit. It's important to know how to search for scripts and use them to exploit vulnerabilities, but we should also try to understand how the exploits work in the first place so we can learn from it and improve our exploit development skills. So let's take a deeper look at the Cacti 1.2.22 RCE. The exploit targets the remote agent.php endpoint of the Cacti application. It constructs a GET request with four parameters, action, host ID, polar ID, and local data IDs. And it does this in a loop, trying different host IDs from 1 to 100 until the exploit works. The payload is inserted into the polar ID field through a command injection vulnerability. The semicolon is used to end the previous command and execute our command with bin sh. Also, the x forwarded for header is used in the request to trick the machine into thinking the request is coming from localhost. Okay, so once we run the exploit and get a shell, step one is to try and elevate our privileges. And the best way to start is by running linpeas, which is the Linux privilege escalation awesome script. Looking at the linpeas output, we see a couple interesting things. There's a few database files in var www html, a custom file called entrypoint.sh, and a couple credentials in the linpeas password scans. But the best result out of linpeas was this, a set UID privilege escalation using the capsh program. Anything that's highlighted yellow like this in the linpeas output usually means getting root. Looking at gtfo bins, which is a great resource for finding set UID and pseudo privilege escalations, we see that the set UID capsh program can be exploited very easily by just running this command. And bada bing bada boom, we're root. Well, that was an easy one. All that's left to do is to get the root flag in, we're done. What? Why is there no root flag here? I got root. Oh, it's because I'm in a Docker container. Looking at the linpeas output from earlier, the machine we got root on was actually a Docker container that's hosted on another machine. And we have to get root on that one to solve the box. So it was back to the drawing board. My first step was taking a look at that entrypoint.sh file from earlier, since it looked pretty interesting. In that file was a couple SQL commands that looked kinda juicy, especially since they had credentials in them, so I explored the database. I found a table called user auth, which had the hashed passwords of two users, admin and Marcus, which were stored in the bcrypt hash format. 
John and Hashcat are great password cracking programs, and I already had Hashcat installed on my host machine, so I just ran it there with the rocky.txt word list. I ended up cracking one of the passwords to be Funky Monkey. Funky Monkey! Funky Monkey! I first tried using SSH with these credentials, and it worked! I now had a compromised user account on the box. Marcus wasn't allowed to run sudo, so I tried running linpeas again to see if I could find anything that might give me root. I saw a couple of open ports, so I used the fast reverse proxy to connect to them. Port 8080 was just the cacti server from earlier, and 44939 gave me a 404 error when I tried to connect, so I didn't have any luck there. I saw that there were a couple times that run C was highlighted by linpeas, and that reminded me of another time I used a vulnerability in the run C binary to exploit Docker to get root. So I checked the Docker version, and a quick Google search revealed that it had a privilege escalation vulnerability. Looking at the write-up, I saw that this vulnerability required root on the Docker container, which I still had from earlier. So all I had to do was make a bash set UID on the container, run the exploit script, and... Stop right there! It's me, the hacker police. You are about to do something mega cringe. I don't know what you're talking about. You were about to run that exploit without knowing how it works. If you did that, that would make you a script kitty. Oh, you're totally right, hacker man. It's time to do some research. This vulnerability has to do with the main recommended storage driver for Docker, which is Overlay 2. The script iterates through every path from var lib docker overlay 2 and tries to execute bin bash with the dash p flag set, which preserves the environment. Since the set UID bit was set from within the container earlier, this would grant the script root access on the host machine, breaking out of the docker container. Essentially, the host operating system treats the set UID bin bash file within docker as though it belonged to the host OS, allowing privilege escalation to root. This vulnerability was introduced into Moby, Docker's container toolkit, when Docker fixed another vulnerability by changing some of the directory permissions on varlib docker from 700 to 701. Unfortunately, this change meant that unprivileged users on the host machine can execute them, leading to this privilege escalation. There's a lot more detail in this article, which I'll link in the description. They eventually fixed this issue in the 20.10.9 patch to Moby, which set the permissions to 7.10, removing the execute bit, which fixed the vulnerability. And now that I knew how the exploit worked, I ran the script. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked this video and would like to see more Hack the Box videos, then feel free to subscribe down below. If you have any questions, drop a comment and I'll try to respond, or ask me on my Discord server. That's all from me. Peace.